Welcome to the Burden and Blessing Podcast, a study and discussion forum on the truth of God's Word. Our summary verses of the books of the Bible introduce us to the theme of each book of the Old and New Testament scriptures so that we might have a deeper appreciation and understanding of God's Word of truth. We pray that these brief studies will enable you to get more out of your daily reading and hearing of God's Holy Word. Welcome back to our 66 Summary Verses of the Bible. Very excited to have you listening with us today. Very excited to be discussing these summary verses of the books of the Bible with you today, Pastor Nathaniel Mayhew. My name is Pastor Neil Radical. As we go chronologically through this, we're right around 65, 66 AD. We just went through First and Second Peter, and now we're coming to the Gospel of Mark, which for some reason... Nathaniel's gotten to do all the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And I feel like that is a little bit a slight on me. <laughs> I hey, actually hey, have you, no problem. You get John. You get John. <laughs> no, I actually have no problem with that. You are very good with history and background and so forth. So it, it's very fitting with that. So Nathaniel, would you read for us today what the verse of the day is? Absolutely. Uh, just by the way, Neil, the gospel of Mark is one of my favorite gospels. And, and I love this passage. This is our summary passage for the Gospel of Mark. I think it summarizes well the purpose and intent of Mark's Gospel. It comes from the, the second half of Mark's Gospel, the words of Jesus. He says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. That's from Mark chapter 10, verse 45, from the New King James Version. The Gospel of Mark is, I like to call it the 21st century gospel, because number one, it was intended for a Gentile audience, unlike the Gospel of Matthew, which we talked about earlier. It's the shortest of all the gospels. It only has 16 chapters, and it is very fast paced. It's, it's constantly moving. You don't get bogged down with the details in the Gospel of Mark. He just gives you this beautiful, broad overview, and it continues to move along. So for our sound bite, short attention span generation, the Gospel of Mark is perfect in giving us an overview of what is actually going on. But there's a purpose behind it all. And Mark begins at the very opening verses of the Gospel saying, this is the account of the Son of God. And so he wants us to understand that this individual that he's describing in his gospel is more than just what he seems to be on the surface. He's more than just a man. He's more than just a prophet. He's more than just a good moral teacher. He's divine. And we see that not only in the actions of Jesus, which Mark really likes to focus on. He calms the storm. He heals the sick. He casts out the demons. He raises the dead. Those are the, the powerful actions that Jesus accomplishes but also in his words. And while Mark doesn't get into a lot of detail on the, the sermons of Jesus, he still emphasizes the power in the teaching of Jesus. And all of these things draw us to the fact that Jesus is the son of God and that he came for a purpose, not in order to have us serve him, but more importantly for him in his perfect life as the son of God, to serve us and to give his life as a ransom for all the world, for many. A beautiful, beautiful gospel. I'm really glad that you focused on that word ransom. I really appreciate your words here because when you look at that word ransom specifically, it is defined in the Greek here as the price for redeeming. In other words, it could also be looked at to liberate many from misery and the penalty of their sins. And I think that's fitting because you look at the context of Mark here and you have James and John making a very proud request about where they're going to sit with Jesus when they get to heaven. And so they're looking at their, their glory in the kingdom for what they've sacrificed, what they've done. And that's why this verse is so telling because Jesus again speaks to not just their pride, but our pride. And he's showing them that in all of Jesus' power and authority, look what he came to do to serve us, not to be served by us, to serve us with his very life, but this ransom of redemption. So this ransom, this sacrifice that Jesus is speaking about here is so fitting to the gospel of Mark, like you point out. And it's really fitting to discuss, like we are right now, during the season of Lent, during the season of the church here, which we heavily focus on humility, not 
our own humility, but really Christ's humility, which humbles us because of our sin and how we've disobeyed and, and shown uh, our disappointment to our Heavenly Father. So Christ demonstrates humility perfectly for us, and we as disciples don't, just like we see with James and John, just like we see with Peter, just like we see with every person living in this world. And so we can be prayerful that this gospel would humble us to understand the love and the humility of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who would come to serve us with his life as a ransom to set us free from sin, to set us free from the curse of the law, to set us free from hell and death itself, to give us that promise and that the service with our ticket to eternal life with him forever in heaven. So a very short verse that puts the disciples in a position of humility instead of pride and puts us in our place too, showing us the love of God, which gives us that position with him forever in heaven. Wonderful, wonderful verse. I'd like to close with a hymn that's not in our hymnal, but I think it emphasizes what you just brought out, Neil. And this, the summary of this passage that the Lord came to serve and he came in humility. And yet as Christians, when we realize why Jesus came, it also motivates us to willingly serve him in a variety of ways. So we close with this hymn. Lord, whose love through humble service bore the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken offered mercy's perfect deed. We, your servants, bring the worship, not of voice alone, but heart, consecrating to your purpose every gift that you impart. As we worship, grant us vision till your love's revealing light in its height and depth and greatness dawns upon our quickened sight, making known the needs and burdens your compassion bids us bear, stirring us to tireless striving, your abundant life to share. Called by worship to your service, forth in your dear name we go, to the child, the youth, the aged, love and living deeds to show. Hope and health, goodwill and comfort, counsel, aid and peace we give. That your servants, Lord, in freedom, may your mercy know and live. Amen. We invite you to listen for new books each week on Burden and Blessing Podcast, where we believe and confess that every word of God is true. We pray that you will be assured that God's word is pure and is more precious than gold.